Hello everyone and welcome to Eschenko's Den. Today we are jumping into some 5 games that are sure to make your skin crawl. I highly recommend checking out these games over the month of October. So let's get right into a game that I played very recently but it left a very deep scar in me. And that is Amnesia The Dark Descent. Now this game hits all of the right strides in just exactly how I like my horror. There is a sort of Lovecraftian vibe going on in the game, where all these weird algae sort of forces at work behind the scenes. There is this whole madness mechanic with this perfect sort of balance between light and darkness that plays a very key aspect in the gameplay of the game. Right from the get go you will pick up tinder boxes that you can use to light candles and lanterns around the world. On top of that you can also find your own lantern that you can pick up and walk around with and this will have a limited resource of oil that you you need to top up it. Then this is where this fine balance comes in that I spoke about earlier. You will need to check your light for the light will keep your sanity high but there are creatures around the world that will stalk around and track your movements as you go along. So in order to stay away from these creatures you will need to hide in the dark but the darkness will affect your sanity and as your sanity dwindles you will start hearing noises and you will start seeing things across your screen. It will actually affect your movement so it becomes more and more difficult to control your character which makes a difficult situation even that much more harrowing. So you'll definitely you want to stay in the light but you also have to stay in the dark in order for your character to stay away from these creatures so it's definitely the sort of balance throughout the game that you'll need to maintain in order for your character to survive where amnesia's sense of horror comes in is in this atmosphere in the world that it created where you roam around and try to survive there are no weapons for you to take on the creatures so it's definitely up to your wits for you to survive and just try to hide and not get caught by these creatures meanwhile there is this deeper story going on where you'll pick up notes and you'll read it also creates a sense of horror as you start figuring out and piecing together why all of these things are going wrong. You'll delve into the terrible events of your character Daniel's boss while uncovering all of the other characters who also played a part in this. Now let me tell you, just listening to what happens opens a whole nother layer of horror. Some really nasty stuff took place that the nerds go into great detail of explaining. It'll more than tingle the hair at the back of your neck. Amnesia definitely succeeds in creating this slow burning, gut wrenching sort of horror and the atmosphere that drips this tenseness and you just trying to survive in this world. Amnesia is a ride from start to end. It's definitely not a very long game but it is jam packed with a lot for you to do and a lot that's going on and it's definitely worth checking checking out. Sometimes it is better to experience horror as a group and share those chills amongst your friends. This is exactly where Phasmophobia excels. We've all seen those ghost hunting shows where they're going to a creepy mansion or an all rundown hospital. They run around, set up equipment and try to find all sorts of different nasties that go bump. Well Phasmophobia takes that and it runs away with the concept. The game is actually very simple in its execution. You start off in a van with your whole team and you each have to pick which sort of equipment you're going to use for the mission ahead. When you go out you will explore a house or a sanitarium, any sort of different map that you chose and you can explore it. And for me you can search for different sorts of activity throughout the level that you have to spot certain things to try to figure out what sort of ghost is haunting that specific location. Depending on what sort of evidence you find you can record it. From there you can also achieve some bonus objectives that will give you extra money at the end of each mission depending on who survived the mission actually. You'll get a cash injection and this will lead to the next mission where you can buy different sorts of things and improve your equipment and just get better overall at the game. But all the best and most expensive equipment you can get your hands on is not going to save your skin though. So take caution as you go into each level. For different guys have different sort of behaviors and the moment they start hunting all bets are off. You're gonna have to run and gonna have to hide. Find yourself the closest locker just to hide away in and over time you'll see the sanity of your entire team start to dwindle and the lower your sanity is the more aggressive these ghosts start to get. It makes for a really nail biting situation when you're the last man standing and you have to try to figure out what you do now. Do you just call the mission run away, scrap everything you had, just try to guess whatever ghost it is or do you try to finish the hunt? Phasmophobia has a very fun loop to the game. We're going to each environment and we'll start seeing patterns amongst the ghosts and start to explore and just understand the environment and the ghost behavior a lot better. The game has a lot of fun and a lot of scares to be had for you and all of your friends. Next up we probably have the most famous game on the list and that is going to be Darkest Dungeon. Alright, so me mentioning Darkest Dungeon for a horror list might raise a few eyebrows, but definitely hear me out on this one. So in preparation to play the game, I watched a few videos online and a lot of people are finding it a game that you can break down into the mechanics, that you can look at every character and everything you can do in the game and just mechanically lay it in front of you to make it a lot more easier. So you get kind of that sort of crowd to find this game less horror and more just mechanically something that you can understand. 
on the other end of that, one of my friends played the game and he stopped playing it because he said it gave him this very dismal, very depressing feeling and he did not enjoy the game at all in that sense. So you can break it down to these two crowds. One side who mechanically knows the game down pat, it is just something to overcome. And on the other hand, you have people who find it too hard, too dismal, too dark and not really for them. As someone who newly experienced the game quite recently, I will go into that a little bit and say my thoughts on the game. Right off the bat, you will immediately feel this tense atmosphere descending upon you. As you spend your time in your haven managing your party, you'll have to manage the stress and the negative quirks that start kicking in. You can definitely feel the world is against you. You are fighting against the odds, trying to make your way. As for being a new player, you will feel that you are fighting an uphill battle from the start. It is very difficult to get the right things down and know what you're supposed to do with your party. This is truly exemplified in the fact that you have to look at your characters more as pawns. If you play your normal sort of RPGs, you really start loving your characters. Playing Baldur's Gate or any of these sort of games, you look at your party members more as individuals. Where in Darkest Dungeon, you're gonna lose people and you will go through them quite a bit. I even made a joke video of all the party members I lost in my first playthrough. Now, what I love about the dismal atmosphere that's throughout the game is the Lovecraftian vibes that's weaved throughout the entire story. Every location you go through, you can definitely feel that sort of eldritch horror laced throughout. I really love the feel that that brings to the game. Combat itself is not easy. There is a lot of RNG that goes into it. And like I said, the madness mechanic peppered throughout definitely plays a hand. You have a torch that you have to light. So light plays a very key aspect in the game. It's really the driving force behind your character descending into madness. As you go through all of these weird horrors and eldritch creatures, there is this definite palpable threat throughout the entire game. If you decide to go fresh into the game, there is a definite challenge that will sit with you, even if you fail or if you succeed. It'll stick in the back of your mind and Darkest Dungeon is a type of game that will come back to time and time again. Over the last few years, the survival genre definitely saw a certain boom. A big explosion in titles that's really become very popular. Obviously, the horror genre is going to leak into this, and a game I played recently that I really loved was Darkwood. You will be playing as The Stranger, who finds himself trapped in this very utterly bizarre forest that's almost alive, a place that is truly hostile to your character. You have to explore around, find yourself looking at strange abandoned houses with weird things going on inside of them. At times you'll find yourself encountering these strange people, beings who are kind of mutated, not quite human anymore, who are very savage and they'll outright attack you without any provocation. As I said, there's a lot of locations for you to explore in this forest, from strange abandoned houses and deep dark underground bunkers and caves. These places will offer up items that you need to scavenge to take back to your home base, which you'll have to upgrade and reinforce, for you see when night falls, these creatures attack your house. In the darkness, there are a lot of strange things going on. You'll see things and hear things that might not be real. That's definitely very dangerous to your character. Even the environment itself can be a bit of a trap. As you walk around, you can walk into traps later around or there are hazardous mushrooms that you could walk into that can plague you, all sorts of different stuff. And I even made a video of my first playthrough where I walked into a lot of things. I was prone to walk into stuff. So the game itself is very hazardous, in the environment itself even. At least it's not all hostility. If you see, there are some NPCs in the game you can actually interact with. Some of them will be able to barter with and get some new items and materials to build up your base and your repertoire of weaponry. But interestingly enough, in the game, there is no real currency that you work with. Instead, there is repetition. So as you help these folk out, or survive the night even, you can build up reputation with them that you'll be able to barter for better items. So it's a very interesting and fun system that you can play around with. What Darkwood gets very right is this grim nail-biting atmosphere. Even in the daytime, you don't feel safe. You never feel safe in the game. Even as you upgrade your house and you get better at the game and stronger and get more tools to fight off these beasts and creatures, you never feel safe. You never feel really secure in the game, which it really nails down. And as you explore and find more crazy weird stuff in the game can't help but find yourself loving the grim dark atmosphere of this world and i can highly recommend anyone to go into this game if you're looking for some scares and chilling atmosphere On our final stop of this train ride of chills, we find ourselves in the capable hands of the sci-fi title Stasis. Something I have to add up front is, as a bit of a twofer, you have to mention the title Kane as well. For you see the developers The Brotherhood, they created Stasis and it came out and you could play it unto its entirety right up until the end. But then they also released Kane, a free title that you can download anytime for free. I will definitely say that when you finish Status, definitely follow it up with Kane as these two come as a one-two punch knockout. 
for you see a lot of the events in Stasis is reflected in Kane and vice versa, so the two definitely go hand in hand. In Stasis you will play as John, a character who went to the Stasis alongside his family, but he woke up alone on a space station in the aftermath of a horrific event. Then over on the other side of things there is Kane, where you'll be playing as Hadley, a woman who finds herself waking up from stasis deep into pregnancy, with her strange captors very interested in the child in her stomach, and as Hadley I have to explore around in the station. Much the same as she had to do in stasis, there are a lot of puzzles that you'll need to overcome, and the game offers a lot of opportunities for you to die, so you'll definitely have to keep your wits about you. The part where Kane and Stasis both exceptionally excel at is in the story. It is so well laid out that it's so much to go into the corporation of Kane and just vilify them and show you how gruesome and disgusting these corporations can actually be. Another part where the story excels is where you can go around and you can find PDAs where they go into the crew and the different members who've been killed off and you can see into their lives and the little tidbits and things that they reveal about the station where you can slowly see that something is not right and it's all gonna crumble right up until the end where everything falls apart and you can see see where disaster struck and just how these people ended up in such a disgusting way. It really creates a level of empathy and dread as well for you read about these monsters and entities who are created and are now roaming about. So it's really building the tension in the game that I loved so much. The game has this deep tense atmosphere that you can cut off a knife. So if these are your sort of games I would definitely recommend them for you. They will really send a shiver down your spine. And there we have five indie titles in the horror genre that's sure to send a shiver down your spine and more than perfect experience over the month of October. But these are just my thoughts on these games. What did you think of these games? Did you enjoy any of them? Would you definitely rank them as five horror games worth playing? Or are there some other indie titles in the horror genre that really jumped out at you? Definitely let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like as it really helps out the channel a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my top 5 videos or some indie games that I play every weekday. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this list with me. So until next time everyone.